Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane. This video is part of my favorite series, and today we're going to be talking about the Atari Jaguar. So the Atari Jaguar was released in November 1993 by Atari. I think it was their sixth system that they had come out with. And it was commercially a flop. Just get to the end of that story. But you guys know me. I I really do love my underdog systems. I love the TurboGrafx-16. And I actually found some enjoyment in the Atari Jag. And these are my favorite games. I still own my Jag. And then later I might go over some stuff about like what you need to look out for. So first up is Raiden 1994 by Image Tech Design. It's a shmup. It's Raiden. A lot of people consider the JAG version of the game to be the best version of it. I think they're right. It's definitely a very good home console version. Now, nothing's going to really compete against an arcade cabinet that's just been dedicated towards it. But it's still really, really good. Next up is one of the Jaguar CD games, which, yes, I do have a Jaguar CD. Yes, it works. No, it's not the best thing in the world, but if you maintain it, you're fine. But it's... Dragon's Lair, released 1995 by ReadySoft. I love Don Bluth's art style. I've watched a lot of his stuff. It's just an art style that really does speak to uh, my childhood. I absolutely love it to death. And Dragon's Lair, this is a good port. Of course, it's, it's kind of hard to, to mess that game up other than just to reduce the resolution to the point where console can handle it. Next up, I've got Doom, released 1994 by ID Software. I both love and dislike this game because... I love it because it was such a good port of Doom, and it did such a great job of, of allowing Doom to, to be on a console. But I miss the music. I really miss the music in the game, and there's a lot of people that agree with me that we need to have the music back in the game and stuff. And I'm pretty sure that there's some repros out there that have added the music back or found a way of adding the music back with the CD and stuff like that. I just haven't explored that yet. If any of you guys know of this, please leave a comment below. I'd love to check it out. Next up is Checkered Flag. I do like racing games, and I definitely wanted one on my Jag, but this is not the best. They were definitely try to, trying to compete against virtual racing, Sega, and a few others and stuff, but it's not terrible. But it's kind of a rough play. It was released in 1991 by Atari directly. And then, final one, which is no surprise to absolutely anybody, is Aliens vs. Predator, 1994 by Atari. Man, everyone's said stuff about this game. You get to play as an alien, you get to play as a predator, you get to play as a marine, and everyone's got their opinions on which one is the best to play, and all of this other stuff, and I just enjoy the game. I love the Wayland Yutani universe, and I definitely like playing in it and being immersed in that universe. Now, on to some of the hardware stuff. Most of the time, when you find a Jag, you'll find the base unit and the power brick, which, trust me, doesn't have the power brick, don't buy it. And then the AV cables. The system's actually pretty easy to, to modify, to have S-Video out and all of this other stuff, as long as you're willing to 
drill ports into the back plastic and, and add these things. I found that for myself, creating cables was a little bit difficult. I actually went on to Etsy and purchased a set of S video cables that were aftermarket and 3D printed and all this other stuff. The three button controller with the nine with the number pad is pretty standard. And to find a six button pad is very rare and most of the people that know what it means they're, they're going to charge for it. Now the CD system also comes with its own power adapter so it's Jag's trying to compete against the Genesis for number of power adapters and stuff but definitely the Genesis lens. But So the, the Jag CD most of the time they have a hard time working it's usually just the connectors need to be cleaned. If you do clean the connectors and it still doesn't work, you might need to reseat it a couple of times. And if it doesn't work after that, there's a really good chance that it's never going to work. There was a lot of them that just didn't have that high of a quality control on them. But like I said, you know, knock on wood, mine works. It works fairly well. Every once in a while, I do. I still have issues, even though mine's in good condition. I do have issues where uh, cartridges will not play. And then there's other things, like, I think it's called the multiplayer tap. It's basically takes the second player and it spreads it out so that you can have more than just two players on the system. I haven't really found a lot of games that make use of that. And... and all honesty, I probably wouldn't think that it was worth it. Well, that's it for this episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host, Mondane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. If you like what you see, you can support me and my channel on Patreon by clicking one of the links below. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.